Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the last time the Athlon 3000G got pulled out of the draw it was for the Call of Duty Vanguard beta test where it managed to achieve at least 30 frames per second on average with only the integrated Vega 3 graphics. 800 by 600 was the only resolution that allowed us to do this and the game looked terrible but still the 2 core 4 threaded 3000G just about scraped by. Today though, it's up against the beta for Battlefield 2042 and with no 800x600 graphic option available, well, I'm a bit more concerned. My concerns only worsened when the game refused to start altogether, but this was actually due to the latest optional 21.10.1 drivers and reverting to the 21.8.2 drivers resolved this. With the lowest 1024x768 resolution and dynamic scaling enabled, things were looking promising as we got to the loading menu. Look at that, over 300 frames per second. This excitement was very short lived, though the eventual outcome was expected as the game loaded and our frame rate plummeted. Still, I do wonder how much closer to 30fps we'd actually get if we had faster memory. I'm currently using 16 gigs of 3200MHz DDR4 in dual channel, but to be honest, I don't really think we'd get much of a performance boost with anything faster, not with the Athlon anyway. The only way to get more than 25fps was to look up at the sky, and we're not going to be wiping out many enemies like this, unless they're in a helicopter flying over very slowly. I then wondered just how well the Athlon would do if we threw a discrete graphics card into the equation, like my RTX 3060 for example. This certainly improved things, but the dual core 3000G and the 3060 is just as much of an unlikely real world combination as it is a stupid one, because the CPU will be the limiting factor in pretty much every game ever made. The settings don't matter here, low, medium and high will all produce very similar results and enabling dynamic scaling won't do much. This is again because of how badly the processor is holding our GPU back. Now I know the 3060 isn't the best card in the world but 60fps at 1080p would be easily achievable with a more powerful processor and while the game does still hit at least 30fps in less intensive areas, wandering into the heat of the battle with two cores and a 3060 is a bit like driving you and your friends around in a car using only first gear. It will run and you'll get where you're going but you and everyone around you will suffer. To be honest, I was certain that the 3000G would struggle before even getting into this, whether on its own or paired with a discrete GPU, but I just like to know how much it struggles, and how far off we are from playable frame rates in modern games, hence the reason I keep testing it. It'll be tackling Far Cry 6 next time around, but until then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.